Is Grace okay with that? I can't see her. Um, I, I don't know. Okay. Okay, so I work at La Plata Youth Services. Yeah, sure. Um, we're a diversion program here in La Plata County. We serve all of La Plata County. So we take, as it, you know, in short, really, we are advocates for youth who are facing problems, mostly in court with police officers, things like that. But I also like to emphasize, especially when I'm in brown spaces, that we take referrals from parents. <laughs> you don't have to wait till your kid's in trouble. We can be that person who shows up at the school and is like, hey, how's it going? What's up? You know, because, you know, we are. Uh, uh, most of our, most of the youth that we serve in our office are 37% youth of color. I have just started at La Plata Youth Services with the full intent of creating space just for those youth and um, allowing them and empowering them to do and say what they want to do, at least in my space. Um, I've, um, it's, it's a wonderful experience. I love my job more than anything. Um, we're, we're gearing up for a lot of youth of color programming. Um, some of the things that we are trying to do, um, we've like had a, we had a res day where I took a lot of kids from Durango and we went to Ignacio and they got to hang out at the radio station. The casino bought them lunch. Um, we went to the museum and we also hung out with tribal royalty. Um, we also had the block party and that was a huge success. Um, we had a lot of um, families there. We had a lot of families, and we partnered with actually Anthony's class, and they came and did a lot of playing with them. And we also had like the Prejudice Elimination Action Team doing a lot of icebreakers around um, anti-bias education and like what does that mean when people use certain terms in our spaces? Like, what does it mean to actually be anti-bias? What does it mean to own our own? Because we all have them, whether we want to admit it or not. Um, and I think that it's one of the most wonderful organizations, youth organizations in Durango, personally, I think so. Um, and we also have Jennifer here. I don't know if she wants to talk about it, but we have a lot of programs, and I think hers is probably one of the most, um, I don't even have the word for it. It is just, I'm always in awe <laughs> um, of, of all the outcomes that come, out, come from her program. And I would really like for her to speak to it because this is her baby and she yeah. rocks at it. <laughs> so. Thank you. Um, so I have, I think, the coolest job title that I've heard about, which is Radical Possibilities Program Director. And um, <clears throat> so what we do is um, really connected to what I've been hearing folks talk about today is um, really looking at, um, so my whole passion is around social justice with youth. Um, fighting against ageism, looking at the, I think this is a very quiet oppression that happens in our, in our world, um, and I really seek to bring a lot of voice to that. Um, and so the different programs that we have going on, um, a big one is Community and Schools Partnership. And um, we've got some restorative justice programming that we're doing, and this is really about bringing community into the schools to get the kind of support that, that you specifically were talking about, Dr. Washington. So um, I think that, you know, I'm really, really interested in what you're saying because the work that um, I do is super community-based and it's really about getting into the systems and affecting change from the inside. So I get to use what I look like to make that happen. Um, and so that's just really exciting and to just see the, um, I think that there's there's this value of having the activism from the outside and the activism from the inside. And I think we have to affect change um, from all directions. And that I think like, you know, there's a lot of um, folks in the room who are probably in school and, as, and I really have been thinking about you as I'm listening, like where are you headed? And I think a great question to ask yourselves is um, where are you most powerful in affecting change? And sometimes we do it from the inside, sometimes we do it from the edge, that's my favorite place, and sometimes we do it from the outside. So um, one of the, so we do a lot of just trying to create climate change in schools. Um, the other thing we do that I would, I'm like, okay, I can put a little recruitment pitch in here today. Is, um, we have a, a mentorship program called Radical Possibilities, and um, this is for youth in our community who are experiencing really significant barriers in their lives. And like Galinda was saying, a lot of times due to racism, bullying, um, perceived or constructed disabilities, um, and, and abuse um, at home, um, different, a uh, lot of socioeconomic oppression, 
Um, and so we actually uh, give a huge amount of support to mentors who are working with these students um, so that this becomes a partnership between the youth and the students and that's where it's radical and we've just had um, just amazing, amazing results with that. So if anybody in this room wants to show up as a mentor, talk to me. Um, it's an amazing, powerful program and we do, they spend, you spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with the students that you're working with, but then we also have group activities and we're doing political action theater and Alenda's helping us bring in all the music components. We have Dancing Earth was just here a couple weeks ago and they're coming back to do um, workshops with the students we're working with. So we've got some graffiti art, you know, um, going on. So we've got a lot of neat things going on when we get together as a group. So I see heads nodding and really that's like the thing I'd love to put a plug in for. Um, and um, probably some poetry slams this year too. Yeah. So um, let's do that. Hey, I wanted to, I'm so glad you brought that up too because one of the other things that are, um, speaking of that deliberate space for youth of color, um, we are actually having conversations where we're trying to, for loose, I hate that word support group, but we're going to have like support groups for youth of color and we're calling it Youth of Color Connections and we're going to start that middle school. And we're gonna, and literally, it is what it is. We're just letting them hang out together where adults and allies are in the room with them just as listeners. Not there to act on anything, but allowing students to say what they wanna say because sometimes, especially at that age, we don't, you, you don't really have the language for what you're experiencing in middle school. You don't know what racism is. You don't know when people are othering you. You don't know you don't even realize you're doing it to your to to other peers sometimes, but I um, so one of the things we're going to do is start that in middle school, and we're also going to do Journey Through Our Heritage, which is specific to youth of color. Um, we're really it's connecting. It's a curriculum based out of um, Metro State University, and a lot of people do it across the state. We just have to be down way down here, um, but it connects youth to their roots and their culture, and like. Really, they get to study a history that's totally left out of their anything they had ever known about history if they don't get it at home. So I know my kids get it at home. <laughs> but um, so you know they're going to learn like how many people know that this where we're standing on indigenous land. We are here. This this would not be happening without indigenous people. No matter where you walk, no matter where you walk in the United States, you are here because of what has happened to indigenous people. And um, and so this is something that our office, I am so grateful, because um, I had all these wonderful ideas when I started as the only person of color in the office. Um, I, I had all these wonderful ideas and they're being embraced and they want to create these spaces too. So we're also looking for mentors in that round too with the Journey program. And if you just want to be one of the adults that's just coming and hanging out at lunch with the kids, and just being with them and just hanging out. You don't have to have a degree, you don't have to have anything fancy, you're just hanging out. And that's what's cool about it. So, and with and now we're gonna do our poetry. And I really wanna put a plug in. I used to do peace, I used to do peace jam programming in Durango, and one of them used to be in my group. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> do you wanna go first? So we have Sierra and we have Grace. And then we have Chad, who has some poetry, but I wanted to let the youth go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, just a heads up, I, coming into this, I didn't really know anything about what it was about. Um, so this it doesn't really fit the context of diversity or anything like that, but I do really respect everything you guys have been talking about, and it's really fascinating. Um, yeah. So this is a poem I actually wrote this morning. Um, okay. As I look out on the traffic-filled streets, I apprehend the spinning by imagining the road is a conveyor belt and the cars are in park. And when I get too dizzy, I find myself in the checkout lane where the grocery store clerk looks at me like I'm crazy when I tell her these apples have wheels on them. Have you ever thought about how heavy air is? 
The strongest man on earth might be able to lift a car off of its conveyor belt, but would throw his back out trying to raise the space in between. And that's what falling feels like. The colors of the trees are changing again, and the leaves have never looked more beautiful than when they're about to die, for they do not resist gravity the way we do. The way we grasp onto ourselves so we don't fall from ourselves into ourselves. I look away from the cars in the park, in park at 60 miles an hour, and tell myself that sanity is not for the same. And I feel as open as a door that is locked when I remember I cannot walk through myself, and falling is an illusion the leaves are not victim of. So I see myself drifting off of a tree, and instead of trying to lift the air, I let it decide where I land. And when the first blanket of snow covers me, it does not offer warmth. But I won't resist the bite of the bitter cold, for it will only go away if, if I return it with benevolence. And I see its cruelty as a kindness. For the road to hell may be paved with good intentions, but the elevator to heaven needs maintenance, and the devil does quite a good job at it. Because the conveyor belt does not look like it's moving without a car parked on top of it, and the car cannot drive without the solidity of the road. I also had no idea what I was getting into today. You're all lovely people <laughs> with wonderfully eloquent views on very important subjects that I can greatly appreciate. Um, yeah. <laughs> Social awkwardness isn't a thing, it's fine. Um, yeah, so I actually have two poems and you guys should pick which one you would like to hear. There's one about ledges and there's one about mouths. <laughs> Both. 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 Okay, we Both. can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get really warm from social anxiety, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, ledges and unwa unwanted impulses. Toes dangle over lips, stubborn concrete edges bite the sky with teeth that have become gnarled and strange. Spearheaded steeples pierce the ambient cloud cover, and below, automobiles skitter through the city streets like nervous insects flitting about chirping their displeasure as they weave in lines through the splotchy rivulets of asphalt that trickle between buildings like flood water after a storm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to scroll through things. Yeah. My lips sit skewed, their axes tilted, pinched and parched, cracks are peppered and pepper cracked along their ridged and pricked and creaking plains. My lips, my lips slits, I can't talk. <laughs> my lips sit slanted with little care for their aimless cradle. Between the crinkled laugh lines that cluster around my mouth, they sleep ensconced in tattered peels of skin they've shed like shale. My lips sit listing of space and sin and dwindled murmur. They wrap themselves in quilts of acrid saline candor and cloying, cloying damning fable, till gasping quick their breath sighs cold. My lips split thought of love and lies and order them into rank, marching them like soldiers through their bloody beaten through the bl the bloody beaten gate above my throat, till I can no longer hear myself speak over the monotonous pounding of steel toed boots in my ear. That's all. Hi everyone, uh, once again, my name is Chad Yen, or Zhechi Chad Yen. So I'm going to, I'm a relative youth, <laughs> as young as these beautiful ladies are. Uh, so I wrote this poem back in 2009, and I think it could be fitting in what we're talking about today. So, give me just a moment here, dealing with technical difficulty. So, how many of you, I'm trying to buy some time here, how many of you have heard of a AM, American Indian Movement? Oh, yes. AIM. AIM. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm also an immigrant, uh, having immigrated here when I, was in, uh, when I was 17. So, English is my third language, so I'm still working on my pronunciation and enunciation. So, bear with me.
So this poem is called, I No Longer Feel White. Have you heard of it? OK, great. Ever since I was awakened to all the talks regarding politics, society, and racial inequality. Ever since I was cursed with the passions of listening to NPR daily, I've been blessed to be a socially conscious global citizen. I have been blessed to be a more evolved being. For now I know my place in society. For now I know how to control my destiny. Thank you for opening my eyes, Dr. Martin Luther King. Thank you for giving me the right to ride Miss Rosa Parks. Thank you for being so immensely strong to have shattered cultural stereotypes, Jesse Owens and Muhammad Ali. Thank you for being so militant that you've told them to stay distant, Malcolm X and AIM. Thank you for your patriotism and unique code. So we have come to know that those battles could not have been won without the blood, sweat, and tears of those once disowned. Thank you for being so smooth and jazzy so people finally knew the tenderness of the black and the few, Duke Allington and Nat King Cole. Thank you for standing up against injustice towards all minorities, and thank you for enduring the brutality, keeping dignity while facing sneering insults, insistent dehumanization, and perennial segregation. So that I may stand in the midst of you as a proud Asian descent and a humble immigrant, laughing, cheering, and sharing my two cents without fearing prejudice or discrimination. So I may have, as a proud Asian descent and humble immigrant, being viewed as an equal fellow human being, to drink from the same water fountain, water fountain as you, to dine at the same bar sitting right next to you, to enjoy the diversity offered here at Fort Lewis College with all of you. I tell you what, I no longer feel white. I no longer wish to be known as someone in disguise. I no longer feel compelled to conform to a norm to which I don't belong. It's not the case that this American culture is better or worse. It's only the fact that I've longed to walk my own path. I don't have to feel ashamed to be controversial and unconventional. In fact, I'm damn proud of being unique and original. Nor do I, need to, nor do I think I need to act gangsta, wearing a durag and talking mucho ghetto, to be loved and embraced like a brother. Ya no creo que es necesario hablar español perfecto y actuar como un hermano cholo, to be adored by unas muchachas hermosas, y to be loved by las señoritas bonitas. No longer do I believe I have to act culturally stereotypical, speaking with a Chinese accent, devouring fried rice, chucking chilled sake, all the while picking up sushi with chopsticks, dipping into wasabi. All just to get a chuckle. I no longer feel white. I no longer feel black. I no longer feel brown, red, nor yellow. I no longer feel white. I feel that I am every single one of you, destined to be connected throughout eternity. I am in every single one of you, and you are in every fiber of me. 
empowered, inspired, and inspiring being. No one is to tell me what I can or cannot be. What's that you call glass ceiling? And how have you defined gender, class, or ethnicity? As my spirits soar like an ego, where is my destination but beyond galaxies? Why hang with the turkeys? Why toy with the self-limited? When life is but a sacred play, and the world is my stage. Thank you very much. We have uh, three minutes left just to respect people's time and everything. So I didn't know if somebody wanted to say something, but we got three minutes. Sure. Yes. I wanted to share this poem last night, but I um, Last night, my friend Melody Baker, she hosted an event to, uh, this, it was called the Single Books, what was it called? Single Rivers Red. Single Rivers Red. And it was to honor the, uh, the Single and Indigenous Women. So I um, dedicate this poem to them. And it's about my, uh, my travels. I graduated from Fort Lewis in 2011, and I've kept going since. So. Rolling life in a carry-on suitcase over Anchorage, Seattle, Chicago, and into Rome. With Euro tucked under my raincoat, I pray for salvation in the Tuscan terrain. Europe is one giant ancient city, new buildings and resurrection of 70 AD. At the Colosseum, I hear chisels, I hear the hammers, Gun, metal, and ancient stone clash, aged and modern. Before Christ, after death, before common error or after discovery. Click clack the tools to preserve empire and we ta. The Colosseum is magnificent in its own glory, but what about the land below? Gladiator trees quenched with blood, sport, and sweat from Roman physique spanning a millennia ago. Can blood feed the land? Are there things the land should never ingest? These thoughts circle as we pass down Roma, the midnight hour at the Vatican, and Spagna lining the Spanish steps. I came to see the land, not dream of blood as fertilizer. When will the land see me? Instead, I see the old transformed into new, the skeleton ancient, modern muscle tendons and see new. I want out of Rome. Cities never did a native right, even along the Mediterranean. Fodders and lonely planet outline essentials of Italy. Where to next recipe book? Section four, highlighted in orange, Tuscany. Taxi up to Roma Termani, stand against the tracks and trail to bin 1A. Usita, city lights, stacked apartments and bricks from 69 AD. Enter country. I see Sinalunga and dirt roads eating closer now. I came with the intention to find something and realize I do not know all the colors of the world. Maybe Colosseum blood red is enough to hold, yet I yearn for Hugh Bless discovery. Creator, show me more color. As we glide on the tracks, color arrives at Chusi. Bay sheep roaming Tuscan green hillsides. Divine dirt brown vineyards lining the tracks, trailing from Pisa into Florence and even into southern France. Amidst cold steel and alloy, I see red again. The land discovered me with color, what am I seeing? Buried in the ground, ladder pressed for thousands of kilometers, wild poppies. I've seen domesticated poppies in Colorado, but never wild, pure poppies. And what do they hold? Riches and royalty red, ancient red, blood born red, raise me right red, ravish me. Make my cheeks flush. Bean cherry, Pendleton warrior, reverse passion as anger. Arctic sunrise, crushed velvet on womanhood. 
Spirit of gladiator out of Rome, Tuscany to Paris, red blooming, red bursting along lifeless metal as gifts from the terrain. If you search, you will not find what you are looking for. Let color come to you. Familiarity is the land in the column of international constants. Wild poppies from Tuscany to Paris. Every train ride, red rested at my side to forever remind me. No matter where we go and no matter who we see, the land will always be beneath me. Yeah. Thank you.